Today's text is from Mark chapter 10. It's going to be verses 46 to 52, and it's page 47 in your pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. All right. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Can everybody hear? <laughs> just checking. You know, we've uh, been making some adjustments with the sound, so just making sure. Will you pray with me? Lord, speak to us this day through your living word. Instruct us. Present us with a template to follow, a way out of darkness and hopelessness. May your words come alive for us and reach us at our point of need and equip us for the work you have given us to do. And may our worship be worthy, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bar Timaeus. Bar, son of Timaeus. Bartimaeus is someone's son, and we know from our text that he wasn't always blind. We have no idea how long he has been without his sight in the ditch, out of the way of the sighted mobile pilgrims who are on their way to Jerusalem for Passover. Have you ever found yourself there, in the ditch, just off the fairway, in the weeds, that place where you can't see a way out of? You know, sometimes we get in a rut and we can't find our way out and we're in this rut and next thing you know, we become comfortable and next thing you know, we start to decorate and we never see our way out. But we can't assume that this was the case with this blind son of Timaeus. You see, though people in ancient Fal Palestine often associated this kind of personal calamity with being out of the favor of God or perhaps based on the sins of the father. We're not sure why Bartimaeus finds himself in this place, but we know that he is in a place that he didn't expect. He's in a place that he hadn't prepared for, and he's in a place where family and friends would not point with pride and not look on him with affection. Timaeus. People aren't saying, Timaeus, how's that boy of yours, the one for whom you had such high hopes, the one that was going to care for you in your, in your old age, the one that held such promise? You know, I, I thought I saw someone that looked like him, but he was at the side of the road. Well, Bartimaeus is in the side of the road, he's blind, and he's listening. He's listening for the crowds. Has anyone here been without your sight? You know, when I was 14, I began to notice what seemed like a curtain lifting in the bottom of my right eye. You may recall that the images are inverted in your eyes. You see, I'd been struck in the right eye, and, and the retina was torn, and by the time the damage was, had progressed, I was losing my sight from the bottom up. And when the condition was finally diagnosed, I was required to lie in bed for 10 days while the eye settled. 10 days. A long time for a boy of 14 to wonder what had happened. 
A long time for the parents of this boy of 14 to wonder what this meant for their son who had such promise in the sighted world. But I found it to be true that your other senses become more acute. At least that's the way it was for me. So I was really enjoying the fragrance of the candy stripers. Remember them? The volunteers who'd get credit at high school? Smelling good. And I remember the sound of the nurse's shoes and the difference with the hard-soled shoes of the visitors. So Bartimaeus, he sat and he listened and he could hear the crowd approaching and he knew it was with Jesus, this prophet, and he knew that his chance was now and he wasn't gonna let it pass him by. So he began to shout. He said, Jesus. It didn't say that he requested an audience. No, he said, Jesus, son of David, king of Israel, have mercy on me. Jesus, don't ever doubt the power of that name. Bartimaeus wasn't embarrassed. He wasn't afraid. You see, he had already been given a gift, the gift of desperation. Well, Jesus stopped. Can't you see the people behind him running into him? And they're asking, well, what are we stopping for? In the interpreter's Bible, a guy named Halford Lennock writes, Jesus never healed anybody on the run. No stopping is a necessary part of any genuine ministry to life. Stopping, being present. So Jesus stopped and Jesus says, call him to me. Do you ever wonder what that sounded like? You know, sometimes we think Jesus saying, call him to me. No, no, call him to me in the middle of the dusty road. And then the most curious thing happened. This beggar, this no count, this parasite, this blind man is seen. He's seen in a new light. The crowd addresses Bartimaeus in a new way, not in contempt, not in disgust, not in derision, but in encouragement. The very acknowledgement by Jesus the Christ and the blind man was seen with different eyes. Well, Bartimaeus doesn't waste any time. He doesn't ask for a, a hand up. He springs up, we're told. He throws off his cloak and he takes a step towards Jesus. And Jesus asks, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Well, Bartimaeus doesn't hesitate. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't equivocate. He doesn't weigh one thing against the other. He's not asking for the end of the Roman occupation or for a better position on the road to sit and beg. No, he asks to see again. Well, the gospel writer ties it up neatly. The episode is resolved and the narrative moves on. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately, you know Mark, a matter of urgency, immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. Kind of a quick tidy up, tidy summation. But imagine when this was first told, I can only imagine a bit of more color within the telling as Jesus looks at him with wonder, with admiration, with compassion, with love, with respect. And perhaps the teller of the story filled in some details of the Bartimaeus experience, his sensory restoration as he sees the faces of loved ones, as he could walk without fear of running into something or falling off of something. Imagine as he looked on the face of God. Scripture is filled with stories of miracles where those who are made whole leapt about or ran to tell others or walked away, thank you, without saying thanks. But Bartimaeus did none of that. Bartimaeus did more than all of that. Bartimaeus followed Jesus on the way, not on the road, not towards the destination, but on the way which we know Jesus speaks of as the way of God. The Holy Spirit of God speaks to us through Bartimaeus, men and women, urging us to be bold to call out, to shout out to God and to each other what we do not find acceptable in our situation. 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. The darkness where we live these days in fear and in despair and in anger, in aggression, in violence to ourselves and to each other is not acceptable. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. When our loved ones are in pain or in danger, when we are left with a plate too full and find ourselves through our best efforts outside of the searing, healing, transforming light of God's love. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. If we follow the template left us by Mark in the story of Bartimaeus, our way is clear, men and women. First, we listen. We listen from where we are. Next, we call out. Then we don't give up. We spring up when we're called. We cast off all that would weigh us down, and we come to Jesus. We ask for what we need, and we accept what is offered in awe and in gratitude, and we follow. We stand on our own feet, we throw off our cloaks, we lay our needs before Jesus. In the name of the triune God, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen.